Michaelis. I want to wake up in a city with a government that actually works for New Yorkers. Affordable housing, a world-class education for our children, and a transit system that gets you where you need to go. For far too long, politicians have spent their time fundraising from the 1% instead of working for the residents who elected them. Spent more than a decade fighting to clean up our government. I put state legislative voting records online 10 years ago, almost to the day. I authored the law that made the city council a full-time job and eliminated personal income payments to council members from the speaker to reward and maintain loyalty known as Lulu's. However, candidates for mayor could still take contributions of $5,100 from real estate developers or even more when it's bundled by their entire family. When I got elected, I introduced legislation to increase the match to $250 per donor and allow candidates to go from matching a little more than half of the small dollars they receive to matching every small dollar. The problem was that while public matching system worked for the city council, helping newcomers who reflect the communities and diversity of our great city get elected, at a borough-wide and citywide level, the big money gap was far too large to fill with small dollars. To run for city council, you had to raise $68,000. But that big money gap grew to $2.6 million for mayor. When I introduced the legislation to close the gap last term, I could not secure a hearing on the bill until we got 32 sponsors, even though I was the chair of the Governmental Operations Committee. Now I want to take a moment to acknowledge and thank Fernando Cabrera, who was my co-prime sponsor last term when I was chair and continues to be my co-prime sponsor now that he is chair. His passion for elections and campaign finance shines through. Thank you. At our hearing last term, we heard supportive testimony for the legislation from labor organizations such as 32BJ, CWA District 1, political organizations including Working Families Party, the New York Progressive Action Network, New Kings Democrats, New York Democratic Lawyers Councils, Eleanor Legacy Committee, organizing organizations representing communities of interest including New York Immigration Coalition, New York Communities for Change, Make the Road, Community Voices Heard, Bridge Roots, Housing Advocates at Urban Justice Centers, Tenants and Neighbors, Historic District Council, Issue Advocates at Strong Economy for All, Friends of the Earth, Good Government Groups like the Women's City Club of New York, Effective New York, Reinvents Albany, Citizens in Action, Demos, Public Citizen, NYPER, Common Cause, and the Brennan Center. Though their issues were legion, from fighting for the resident rights of workers, immigrants, communities of color, tenants, to saving our planet, all of them could agree that in order to win on their individual issue, we needed to reduce the influence of big money in politics. Last year, the mayor went around the council and took the issue of campaign finance reform straight to the people, who it turned out created de cared a great deal about the issue. On November 8, 2018, 1,151,775 people voted in favor of campaign finance reforms proposed by Cat Ballot Question 1, a staggering 80% of voters. Now, for context, almost as many people voted for campaign finance reform as voted for any candidate for mayor in the 2017 general election. Following this victory, I authored Local Law 1 of 2019, apply these reforms to the special election for public advocate and that included a retroactivity that was requested by the Campaign Finance Board. The good news is that the new system works and it has already flipped how campaigns are financed upside down and for the first time a candidate won a citywide office with a pledge not to take real estate money. Big money no longer made up three quarters of campaign cash and was replaced by small dollars which now made up almost two thirds of total funds. As Amy Lopress, the executive director of the Campaign Finance Board, testified in April, the most frequent contribution size across all candidates was just $10 compared to $100 in the previous citywide races. But one third of the money is still coming from big donations and that is directly related to the gap that still remains. That's why we need a full match and we need to do it now uh, and in part because we couldn't get it done before. Now to put this in perspective, any money from outside the city, from people doing business, from lobbyists, from political action committees, and from individuals who are writing max checks would not be matched, making big money far less valuable than small dollars from residents. And on that big money piece, only that first 175 or 250 gets matched, and the rest doesn't. 
city councils will look a lot more like a clean election system with 121 contributions of 175, giving them all the money they need to run. Borough presidents will need at least 1,041 donations. Controller and public advocate will need 2,024 donations of 250, and mayoral candidates will need 3,248 donations of 250 to raise $809,556. That is still a lot of money, but the news here is it can be done with small dollars. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his commitment er to everyday New Yorkers and the fact that he made this promise when he was running for Speaker. He's kept that promise, and politics is so often defined by the promises not kept versus the promises delivered upon. 2021 is a worst nightmare for me and every other renter in this city with 38 council members, five borough presidents, a controller and mayor, all termed out of office. I shudder to think what big money could do to try to elect a government that would work for them instead of the communities they represent. When I ran in 2013, I didn't take money from real estate. I was mocked and ridiculed, often to my face. Who knows what they said behind my back? Everyone said real estate runs this town. I was offered more money from real estate than I could ever imagine. I was told to take it if I wanted a future in politics. Did not let a broken system change me. Today, we are changing a broken system. I want to wake up in a city where elected officials don't work for big money. Elected I want to wake up in a city where elected officials work for our residents. I want to thank Rob Newman, Brad Reed, Daniel Collins, Elizabeth Cronk, Emily Forgione, and Sebastian Bocci and Central Staff for their work on this bill, and I urge my colleagues to vote yes. I want to commend you, uh, Councilmember Kalos, uh, for being a champion for good government. Uh, you fought for it, uh, and finally today, uh, we're going to get a say that uh, coming from one of the poorest council matter districts uh, in New York City, I wish back in 2010 we had this bill already passed. So difficult to raise uh, funds uh, for campaigns, and actually it doesn't go to our pockets. Uh, it goes to our campaign to get the message out uh, and to let the voters uh, decide which way they would like to see their district go, which leadership uh, should be established in their district to make a difference. Uh, I, I only wish we had this before uh, because I, in, I could tell you in districts like mine, uh, so desperately needed and now we're gonna have it. And with that, let me turn it over uh, to the clerk to call out for the vote. Matthew DiStefano, Committee Clerk, Committee on Governmental Operations. Roll call vote on intro 732B. Chair Cabrera. Yes. Kalos. Yes. Mizell. Yes. Powers. Just permission to explain my vote? Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. I want to um, start by saying that, uh, first of all, I, I just want to recognize Councilman Kalos has been working on this bill for years, and we, when I was a candidate, I stood on the steps of City Hall with him, talk about campaign and finance reform, and this was the, the sort of the key bill that uh, we discussed with a number of the good government groups because bills like this and other, and other efforts and things like that were on the charter as well encourage more people to get into government and to run for office. It's not just a big money game that you can, you can go out there, you can raise money from grassroots uh, donors, and you can be part of the city council or you know, hopefully one day the state assembly or the state senate. I've um, watched him work tirelessly on this bill. I want to give him a lot of credit because this is really one of those efforts where you go out and you build it and eventually you get what it um, get what you 